Welcome to the flowerschool.com video library. I'm Leanne Kessler, director of the Floral Design Institute, and today I'm here to share with you springtime in the garden. It's such a fabulous time of year, so many flowers blooming, so many treasures to work with. They're perfect for creating fabulous flower arrangements. Springtime definitely means tulips, and yes, I have them, but it also means so much more. There's ranunculus, belladonna, the baronia, oh, so fragrant. The dusty miller comes to life. But we can't forget some of our staples that blend in so well, status and its beautiful purple, even carnations in this variegated color, maybe a Gerber daisy. Everything can mix and match in a perfect springtime garden. I took my cue from the floral color palette and chose this periwinkle container. It's a handmade ceramic, very unique shape. I don't want to tape into it because it would show. I want to leave it kind of pristine so you can see the shape as I add the flowers. So instead of tape, I'm using anchor pins and a little bit of floral clay, just pull it off, roll it, bring it around into a donut and then attach it right to the bottom of the anchor pin. Then as I push it in, give it a little twist. That way it gives almost a suction as it adheres to the container. It makes it a little more solid. Again, it's just a bit. Turn it into a snake. Roll it around into a donut. Fasten it down. And then when you put it into the container, just twist that little bit as you put the pressure downward, then you can take your foam, set it right into place, and it will anchor it, holding it secure. Then I don't need quite so much bulk, so I give it a strong cut, scoring my corners. And lastly, just a small amount of moss to begin to cover the mechanics, but leaving the top open so I have plenty of room for my flowers. Belladonna will create fabulous vertical movement in the design and bring the periwinkle blue upwards into a cobalt blue, creating such excitement. Putting a little off center so it's not straight up and down. I'm repeating that. Make sure I get a nice two-inch insertion as an absolute minimum. Tucking them in. And then maybe one that's a little bit shorter, helping to draw the eye on down. Then bringing in the baronia. The hot pink is such a dramatic contrast. Letting it come out a little shorter. Off to the side. And full. So adding in a little more. And again, you can see that hot pink to the cobalt blue. Ooh la la. The soft pink tulips enhance the front. We'll pull them forward, and as they grow, they'll grow upright. So letting them come out a little bit and angled, knowing that they're going to come back and curl inward a bit, then repeating that line, following the same stem insertion placement, adding depth to the design by pulling them forward, making sure they've got room to continue to grow because tulips have their own little ideas of what they want to do. Then coming back, bringing in the soft pink Gerbera, letting it come up tall behind, maybe facing so that as they all grow, they'll look at each other. And then even adding in the anemone. They're nice and soft and delicate. Using those to capture the blue of the cobalt, bringing their deep purple down to the front. And letting them, too, angle outward, all facing back. So it's almost like they're all trying to talk to each other, creating a fabulous contemporary design. With the casual groupings, it begins to look like a garden. 
Now you have to step back and say, okay, how do I balance? Because I came so far and heavy over here. How do I pull you back over here? Filling in the ground covers. And I think with these bright carnations and this wonderful variegation, cutting them short and then tucking them low to anchor the eye on this side of the design. And a second one, grouping them together. And then to fill in the center, a little bit of the Dusty Miller, creating a little plant that's right down in between everything else, tucking it low, and then coming back with the status and using it as a base material to take the blue to the purple all the way down to the periwinkle of the container, tucking it in, filling, adding color at the base. And then as I work, I want to turn it. As you can see, there's foam showing, and I want to bring the color back, helping to cover the foam. And then as I work, adding in more and more texture and basing, and I can even go back, tuck in a little more moss, hiding a piece here, then a few more flowers, and working my way around, and even going back, a little more of the baronia, adding some fullness, on the back side, coming up with the Gerber Daisy, and then turning, looking again, tucking and filling until all my mechanics are covered. A last touch, just a little bit of curly willow, tucked in to add some dynamic movement through the design, Coming over onto the right and on up again, kind of weaving it between the belladonna. And then coming off to the opposite side, keeping this one a little lower, tucking it in between the blooms. And up. So it just intermingles with all the flowers, adding a little bit of movement, flowing line, and then, as in every garden, a little butterfly, just taking a tiny bit of the Oasis Blow Adhesive, the cold glue, dabbing it on the back of the butterfly and let it start to dry. It takes just a tiny, tiny bit. And then setting it right against the branch. And the butterflies are so delicate and the branch is so light. When the air current moves, if somebody walks by, they'll kind of flutter right in the bouquet. Designing in the spring garden style is fun and easy. There's just a few concepts you have to focus on. Be sure to think about how a garden truly is. There's very low things, the ground covers, and then there are the flowers, the bushes and such, and then there are the trees, the taller things. So you want to make sure you have all the levels in your design, and then make sure there's plenty of room for space and air so that the butterflies can fly through. Even if you don't have butterflies, you want that open area so that you enjoy each and every blossom. And lastly, as you're working and you're grouping your materials, bring thumb things way forward, then over to the right, over to the left, and make sure you fill in the back as well. You don't want your garden to be naked back there. You want it to look good from all sides so that when you stand back and enjoy your handiwork, it truly does look like a masterpiece from the garden. For more creative inspiration, check out our website at flowerschool.com. If you've got questions or want to try to find something or need to know just how did that happen, don't hesitate to contact us either through the website or by telephone at 1-800-819-8089. It's easier feel free to use my personal email. It's Leanne, L-E-A-N-N-E, -N -N -E, at floraldesigninstitute.com. For now, happy springtime. Have fun.
and do something you love.